Hello everybody and welcome to a new part in the Blender Thylacine tutorial series. And so last time I worked on the walk cycle and got a pretty convincing result. Um, but this time I thought it would be nice to well, um, take a look at texture for a bit. Um, to texture this uh, creature um, like I always do. I will use um, mostly the blender baking feature to do um, projection painting but sort of my own version of it so um, I don't think you'll find any tutorial about this exact method but I think um, it gives you uh, the best quality results in the shortest uh, time possible because um, um, in contrast to um, warping the images in Photoshop or Trim, we can take advantage of um, the 3D model that we already have and let Blender do most of the image warping to transfer um, the images onto our desired UV map. So, to start off, um, first of all we we should um, export our model and import it again because um, in the model was appended and that often it was appended from from an old blender version and that often um, can be tricky and can cause trouble so we'll just quickly export this one as it is and we should check if it has a material first and it has no material, so we create material and call it Phylocene Adult Female. And we also give it a text strip. Yeah, we take the one that we already have. Okay, now we can export it as a BFB file. And that'll do. We turn off create lots. Okay, that was it. So now we create a new blend file. We don't mind the animations at the moment because we'll be uh, texturing anyway. So we don't need them for now. So now we import the blend file again. Okay, so here we have the model. Now we switch to the UV editing uh, default. And we need a buttons window, or how is it called? Um, properties. It used to be called buttons window, now it's called properties. Okay, we don't need the toolbar. Oh, I should enable the keys again. Yes. Okay, we don't need a toolbar really. So, now we need um, a target image. So, this will be the UV map um, on which we bake. So this will receive all the images. So basically the process of baking is we make a copy of this model and then we um, project the copy onto any image and then we let Blender uh, transfer the image onto our um, onto our original model with uh, the unaltered UV map. So in this process we we transfer the image onto the UV map that we'll be using later on for the final model. So I think we can get started. So first of all we just make a copy of the model. And we can 
go into edit mode and now of course we have to pick an image that we want to project um, so I contacted Dr. Stephen Slightholm of the International Thylacine Specimen Database and he supplied me with some uh, really useful images um, which um, will be really helpful to texture um, the thylacine. Now you might be thinking that such a pelt is um, absolutely ideal because it's already stretched in much the same way as our UV map here but the problem about that is um, it has as you can see oops it has all these strange folds here and curls and stuff and the fur is messed up so um, if we bake that onto our model we we also retain those artifacts and these are fairly hard to even out so such a pelt is probably not as good as you would assume it to be. So we'll mostly refer to um, mounted specimens for texture and color too. The problem is um, on the mounted specimens the color is usually faded so um, for this the pelts here are a better reference because they were usually kept in storage while um, the mounted specimens were exposed uh, to light so the pelts and the colors um, have faded over the years so we could use um, any of these or I've also gotten a few pics um, of the thylacine from the American Museum of Natural, National History um, taken by Mary E um, who runs the Twitter blog uh, called Sixth Extinction check it out if you can so here we have some nice close-ups which would be quite helpful So we'll just, um, I figured we'll pick this one, which is the same specimen um, from the American Museum of National History and in high resolution. So this might be a good start. We get a lot of the head from that and then we'll see what we need to go on and also this portion here should be good. Okay, so we'll open that one. So, open image. Here they are. Uh, this one it was. Okay, now we hide the other one temporarily. And now we try to project it in pretty much the same way as you see it on the image. Of course it makes sense to turn on text review so you see what we're doing. And we should also um, oops, uh, turn on pass um, perspective so we get on um, the right angle and, of, and also the stretching so that's too much perspective 
No, I think we'll do with, without perspective and add the distortion manually. So I like to use the 2D cursor for this task. And then of course, as you know me, the fall off tool. Alt. Oops, nope. I, I can't really remember which was the hotkey for connected fall off. There is one, but I can't remember it. Always for the normal fall off tool, but um, connected fall off is best. Well, you can also select it manually each time you need it. Uh, so, we'll take this part here and project it again from a slightly different angle. Like this. Oh, and we, you see, we're getting close because here it's beginning to match up on the model and when it does, uh, it tells us we're doing the right thing. Okay, and now that's as much as we can get without uh, manually correcting it. Now we take the fall of tool and try to fix it all. Um, so we don't really have to worry about the lower jaw because um, it's not there on, on our reference. It's not visible from this angle so we can just ignore it. And we'll also have other parts to um, to texture this portion here that much better. Um, so, but we can have a look at the ears and make them match a bit better, so we don't have any unwanted area on the ear. So this is interesting. It looks like. Here should be um, the end of the ear. Mm. On this edge here, so here. Um, but, well, might be that the previous model or the, the initial version of the model needs some more changes, but for now we'll just keep it as it is. And here we got to move out a little. Okay, yeah, that should do. Of course, um, these ears on the taxidermy could be crumb, so crumbled together, and uh, sh you know, sunken in and uh, sh um, shrunken, and it's it's basically. Um, not exactly the best reference for shape because um, as you will remember the model was based on um, on mostly screen grabs uh, from the video and images of live specimens so now we've got to fix the seam because it would be annoying to do that manually so we pin all the stuff that's good 
then we let uh, Blender calculate the stuff in between. So we just use unwrap and it evened out everything. So now we just gotta make it match to the seams. We give it a little more room to breathe here. Oops. Nope. Don't want that. Ah, it messes up all the nice stuff that we did on the ear. Well, can't have everything. We all have to replace this portion anyway with the um view from behind. So it doesn't really matter much. But what does matter, at least a bit, is... um the distortion of the stripes here so we can counter that quite easily and this is most definitely the end of what we can use here Now we can adjust the arm, at least to some extent we should be able to make use of it. If we project it again, it's too thick. Yeah, that will do. We'll have to edit that manually anyway. So now we can try to pin it once again, uh, to unwrap it once again, and see if it fixes some of the stuff. But first, we pin some more, and we unpin this here to make it easier. To solve. Well, it's fairly stretched, so it, it has some problems. So we have to do a few more pins here. getting there slowly oh yeah Okay, that'll do. Now just this portion over here. We can really fix that quite easily because we can definitely use that. So we project it again. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Yeah, so that place. Pin all that stuff. And then, yeah, let it somehow figure out how to match it. Yeah, that looks good enough. Okay, so now we have a few. Oh, we can also do some parts of the leg. Maybe something useful. Probably not. But, well. not really difficult anyway. So here these are a lot thinner than on the model but I suspect this is because um, the model I made might have been in or the references might have been in, in winter coat rather than uh, thin uh, summer coat which might exp explain why the model is thinner than the image. Okay, so now that should be good enough. Now we can unhide the other model. So, what we gotta do now is set it up for baking. And to do that we have to make sure both have a material. So now we are looking at the target. It has a material, it has a texture, but it's a generated texture of one pixel a resolution. So we replace that with the one we created earlier, which is um, this one, um, which has the nice resolution we created it earlier. So we just select it in the image um, drop down. Now for the target, um, we have to turn off um, this texture. So we disable it just by unticking this box. Now the target is all right. Now let's look at the material for the source of the baking process. Um, we have to make a copy of the material using the plus and we also have to make a copy of the texture again using the plus this time we activate the texture and we select the image that we've used and now we can go to the render tab Scroll way down to bake. We only want to bake the textures. And we set the margin to 64. We turn on selected to active. We set quad split to fixed. We, we don't really need that because our model has no quads at the moment, but it's best practice to do so. And we can set bias to or point zero 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 one. It usually works better with a few more zeros. So now, in case it might crash, we um, make a safe copy. Mm. And call it fallacy 11 text 1. Okay, and now we can bake it. At least try to bake it. Oh, yay! Circular reference in the image uh, stack. Great, I love these. Can't really tell where it comes from. This is just some random bug. Blender, I think. Is really no way to avoid that. 
Hmm, well, now it works. So I can't really complain, that was not really difficult this time. Okay, mm, so now we've got our baked image and we've got to save it, otherwise we'll lose it when we bake the next one. So we save this image and yeah, we should probably create a new folder. Um, call it just one. Okay. So now we can hide this one again and take a look at the next reference that we could use. So we'll just stick with this uh, specimen because it, well, I think it makes sense to do so. So we can use this side view of the head, which will be really quick. We project from you. We open this image. Mm. 0724. We project again to adjust to the oops, image aspect ratio. Now we really don't worry a bit about um, about all the contrast and lighting issues here. It's just about getting the textures. We can then later match everything um, in in, Jim, uh, in GIMP. So that'll do. So you see again the shapes not exactly lining up, but that doesn't really matter because we have the fall of tool to fix it. And I won't adjust um, the shape to the taxidermy just because ours was based on the live animal rather than a stuffed one. So now try to find the jaw joint. And again we use the fall off to close the Close it nicely. And we only want this part so it doesn't mess up the rest. We can stop here because all that won't won't be good anyway because it's uh, stretched too much. We can just do one thing. Now we'll probably have to clone over the over the um, over this area anyway because it's it's uh, stretching. So then we can already perform the next bake. So we unhide this one. Um, and then we go into its texture tab and swap the, the image with our latest image. We just bake again. And you see We've got it. Mm. Save this image. 
Yes. And now we can look at the one from um, behind the ear. And so we hide this one again. And open next graph. Yes, this one. Mm, that's sort of inconvenient. Upside down and all. Maybe like this. It's not really what you used to. Which makes it a bit difficult. Fairly tricky to find the right angle here. I think we need perspective. That's not really helpful because now I can't see the other stuff, so I'll just select this part and then go on. Yeah, now we're fairly close, I think. Yep, that should do. So unhide this one and swap its um, swap the image. Does it take so damn long? Oh, yeah, I see the, um, the messed up bits are confusing it. Because it was so huge, it, it has to put in the image uh, dozens of times, and we can import that. Interest. Size it down. Turn it forward, of course. Now it should go considerably faster. Yeah, that was nice. Image, safest image, number three. So, what can we use next? We have this uh, slightly different angle of the same specimen, which might be useful for this area here. But maybe not. 
maybe it's I don't know we don't well we could probably get more out of this one but it's so hard to see what you're doing that I'm not sure if we can really get a better result Just project this part again. And now it's getting confusing. Unwrap to only creates artifacts. Yay! Unpin this. Now we have some scratching here. We gotta get rid of the seam. Now, yeah, I think there might be some more useful bits now. still not quite perfect. At least we got the most problematic area here. We got that one covered. Yeah. And so we just bake again. No need to swap the image this time. And we just overwrite that other one. And we can hide this one again. And go back to the references. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this one here has a um, good sort of uh, two-thirds top view. was quick. Okay, so we'll just fix the legs.
Yep, that might do. Thing that's useful enough, so no need to spend a lot of work into aligning the pores here. No more gray here. Okay. Yeah, the resolution here is quite low, but maybe it's enough to get you convincing results. Mm, not quite sure. Is it any better? Okay, that would be it for this one. So swap the image. And bake. Okay. So what have we left? Here's this close-up of the ear. Um, I think we already got that in sufficient quality from uh, this one here. So no need to bake that again. And this part here is from another thylacine specimen from the American Museum of National History. I think this one is the male and the one we've been baking all the time was the female. Okay, so then we've got all of these worked out. Then I think the most useful to continue might be this one, which gives us um, great fur texture of the underside, including the jaw and the legs and all this nice curly fur, fur here at the belly, also the pouch, I think that's a male pouch, um, yeah, tail might not be as useful, but we'll just do that one and see how it goes. So, do, 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 do. it's number four, yes. So, which side looks better? That's always tough to decide. I think this side is better. Might be, might not be, who knows. Really, trial and error. Now, of course, we should look at the underside. Um, 
then we've got to scratch it a little. Yeah, so I think we'll have to use quite a bit of fall off here to get it corrected. Now we can again we can only focus on the important bits and ignore everything else. So we inverse this mm, and hide that. Oh, mm -hmm. see, I wouldn't have noticed how that happened otherwise. It's probably best if we just have it unwrap that stuff. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And pin, of course. We can pin the middle line, maybe we get good results. have to go piece by piece, I'm afraid. So this one goes roughly here. This one is unpinned. Why is it doing that? Oh, it doesn't want to go on this side. It has to. That'll do. So we can pin that bit. Now, of course, we can't use all of this one, only the portion where um, the side view didn't work. No, we gotta clean this seam. Mm, annoying to 
tail will just pro project the tail on its own. Small enough that we don't have to worry too much about seams here. Oops, what happened? Well, something happened, not sure what. I think we had to hide this stuff again. fly somewhere. Well. Okay, so now the leg stuff. Make sure we don't overwrite interesting parts of this one. Yeah. Like that. Twisted the legs. That's mean. So now we have to twist as well. So this gives us a good opportunity to texture the undersides of the, the paws. We'll use that opportunity. Yeah, we'll have to clone over those uh, stitches and seams, of course. Well, and I think that should mostly do it now. 
in terms of texture here. So once that one is baked, we'll have enough images or from stuff from enough angles to you know get started with um, merging all the different layers together into one one image. So I'll bake this one and then we'll move over to GIMP. Number five. We'll probably have to make additional bakes later, but this will do for now, I think. So, we open up one of them in Jimp and then drag in all the others to turn them into layers. Sometimes it will not place them in the center, but if you drag them here outside of the image, they will go into the center. So, how do we go about this task now? So, the first thing we delete the obvious, uh, well, trash, really. So, anything we can definitely not use. And then we refine this as we go along. So this is the underside here. And we won't need any top or side view on the underside. Only underside. Now you see this is a bit ugly, so we can turn on um, feather edges. I set it about 20. We should probably redo all of this. And when we do it now, you see that we get nice, smooth edges. which will be easier to hide later on. Of course that can also be a problem in places like this where we have everything uh, close together. Yeah, so we have to adjust it as we go along. Most of the time we'll have to work with um, the eraser tool anyway. Yeah, that'll do for a quick test.
we can also do it inverted only select the stuff we want to keep which makes sense in this case because the stuff we want to keep is fairly small here again I will just use that one as the base layer. Yeah, and now we can start blending stuff in. So we'll use the eraser tool. Slowly erase away all the unwanted stuff. First, correct the brightness. Okay, so it makes sense. It's quite difficult to correct the brightness like this. So it makes sense to create a layer and set its blend mode to saturation. And then we can easy, easily focus on the brightness without having to worry about saturation. So now we can adjust it. We'll bring this one down a bit so we don't really want the perfect setting just yet we just want something that is sort of in between and that we can work with okay Gonna be a bit brighter. Now first here. Gonna reduce contrast a bit on this one, I think. And in the end, we should also get rid of this um, light area here because it messes up the rest. Well, it will be perhaps tough to to decide between this one and the other one at parts at least I can definitely say that this stuff here is not useful 
because it's from the underside. Let's try three. Same here. This is not useful at all either. Well, we'll just ignore that one for now and have a look at the underside. Okay, this is way too bright. Oops. I think this part was actually good. Just might have to clone over it. We'll bring this one below. Why does it refuse to reorder the layers? Hmm. Don't know. It's just being weird, I guess. Well. So now I think we can look at it in color and now try to quickly match the different layers to each other. So the first one is has too much saturation, definitely. This one gets a bit more. This one as well. Oops. This one too. Okay. Well, well, well. This one has more yellow than the rest. And also still more saturation. So we only adjust the yellow and it has less red. In the same way this has more red. But 
less yellow. No. That doesn't work. Okay, then we try a hue shift. Slight one. We gotta bring down the saturation a bit. Okay. So here we should definitely decrease the contrast. Why is it so desaturated? Oh, we gotta go back to this created artifacts here. So we right here a little more and on this one as well so well now we can just have a look at it in game um, on on the model to see how it looks like. Just really rough to see how all the areas are covered. And then we'll easily see where we have to create new stuff. So it's a long way from being done, but it's well starting to take shape. I had will need a lot of manual edits now, and of course, maybe some more pieces. And yeah, but I think that'll be. Um, stuff for another time. So this was basically just the baking part and the initial merging process. Um, the next uh, tutorial will focus more on um, merging all these layers in detail and trying to create a consistent texture really. That was just the tip of the iceberg, what we did here. Just a really quick test. So, um, we just gotta save this one. Um, so we preserve the layers and we can adjust them later. And this will go, oh, where is it? There. Google Drive. <laughs> yeah, so that's it for today. Um, yeah, next time will be more about GIMP stuff, trying to get a consistent texture. Alright, see you next time.